quick recap uh, of like previous class and then I will start putting remote access VPN. So in last uh, session, we had discussion, uh, in fact, critical implementation of like this IPsec site to site VPN. Uh, there we discuss about route-based VPN configuration, route-based, and also policy-based. Route-based VPN is the modern way of like configuring IP6 side-to-side VPN, and it's basically uh, VTI mode or tunnel interface mode, route-based VPN. Dynamic routing is also supported if required. Plus, uh, only one pair of phase two tunnels. Phase two tunnels, irrespective of number of networks or subnet. In policy based VPN, dynamic routing not supported. And uh, one pair of phase two tunnel for one uh, proxy IDs. So in policy bus VPN, basically if uh, there are two subnets or network behind one VPN gateway and there are two network or subnet behind another VPN gateway, gateway two, and gateway one. So basically, um, let me take this pair 10.1.0.0 slash 16, and maybe 10.2.0.0 slash 16. And here, if I take like 172.16.0.0 slash 16, 172.70. So if there are two subnets behind uh, gateway one, and there are two subnets behind gateway two, so in policy-based VPN, what happens? Total four pair of phase two tunnels are created. Four pairs means like one pair between 10.1.0.0 and then 172.16.0.0 slash 16, 10.1.0.0, and then 172.17.0.0. 172.16.0.0 and finally 10.2.0 172.17.0.0 and so basically uh, total uh, four pair of tunnels created so a big limitation in fact if like there are multiple subnets or networks that need to be protected behind each gateway that means Policy-based VPN means number of phase two tunnels are increased. And that's the reason why like policy-based VPN uh, is commonly nowadays like not configured. In fact, in FortiGate also, we have seen like policy-based VPN by default uh, feature uh, is not available. So what we did, we first enable policy-based VPN from feature visibility option, right? And uh, 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 in FortiGate also, we we have just like we seen that uh, uh, for each pair, each proxy IDs or each subnet or network pair, phase two parameters also need to be configured. That's what like we have seen in uh, FortiGate, in fact. But B, whether it's route-based VPN or policy-based VPN, framework that is used is IPsec. IPsec framework is used here, right? IPsec means like phase one and phase two negotiation, IIC protocol is used, internet key exchange, right, for negotiation and for encryption, authentication, data integrity check, ESP is used. IIC is UDP based, UDP port number 500. ESP is uh, like not UDP or TCP based, ESP is just like uh, uh, operates just above the network layer. So identified with just the protocol number, protocol number 50. And uh, 
ESP uh, in, in, inside ESP header, uh, there is a sequence number and sequence number is used uh, in NT replay, NT replay mechanism 32 bits number. And another important uh, field or attribute of ESP header is SPI security parameter index again 32 bits hexadecimal value uh, uh, for each uh, you know like uh, phase two tunnel basically right because uh, uh, like encryption method hashing method and other like informations are not sent with each packet rather like SPI number of value like is embedded uh, like inside ESP header is exchanged and with that value with the SPI number receiving vpn gate we understand like how that packet will be processed what uh, decryption method has to be used and has single get term everything so spi is like security parameter index so both are very important uh, attributes uh, inside esp header so like whether we configure route based vpn or policy based vpn first ipsec framework is used ipsec second or uh, side to side VPN means always available VPN, right? And uh, and can be either harmony spoke or full mesh, like that depends like what type of topology we want. But we can configure either harmony spoke or full mesh topology in uh, side to side VPN. Today topic is like uh, again based on the VPN, but the next VPN and that is remote access VPN because in remote access VPN, protocol wise even we can use SSL also. And uh, SSL like operation or handshake is very different than IPsec because in IPsec what happens in IPsec uh, uh, in phase one like the first turn for turn first turn of negotiation like phase one negotiation in IPsec and mainly more, main mode because in side to side VPN main mode is used. In remote access, aggressive mode is the default mode. Aggressive mode is used. So in mode, the main mode, total six messages are exchanged uh, during phase one negotiation. And messages like the first pair is like uh, security association or security attributes. Security attributes like encryption method, hashing method, authentication method, DH group, and lifetime. So information during like phase one, uh, main mode one and main mode two. So initiator to responder and then responder to initiator. And then two more like messages are exchanged like DH key computation, Diffie Hellman key computation. And then finally VPN peers authentication, main mode five and main mode six. So VPN peers authentication. So total this way six messages are exchanged back and forth like three three two way exchanges. I can say like three two way exchanges in phase one. Like so once phase one is successful, tunnel is created. Then uh, like phase two negotiation starts here because phase two is for the data plane for the user traffic. Phase two tunnel. Phase two tunnel is basically unidirectional phase one is bidirectional and during phase two again like encryption method is negotiated hashing method for the data plane traffic uh, but authentication method no not negotiated dh group if pfs is enabled then yes dh group is also negotiated lifetime plus like the protocol whether like esp or ah that's another uh, important uh, like exchange during uh, phase two and uh, in case of policy based VPN proxy IDs, of course, so proxy IDs like the network pair or subnet pair. So all exchange during phase two. Once both tunnels are successful, then yes, like uh, data plane traffic, user traffic will be now uh, exchanged securely between uh, both networks. That's what we have learned during uh, this IP6 side to side VPN. That is always available VPN like for size connectivity. But what about other VPN, like the VPN that we, um, so let's, let's quickly go through this, then I'll be back. So another VPN is like remote access VPN. So remote access VPN uh, enables users to connect to a private network remotely using a VPN and implies who need to access their company's network 
from off site locations are people who want to securely connect to a private network from a public area frequently use this kind of vpn so remote access vpn is on demand vpn on demand vpn uh, it's not site to site basically because uh, remote access vpn means like for uh, like dial up our mobile users in fact so it is one of the use case like uh, to access enterprise network in resources remotely remotely right using internet as the transport and there are different types of remote access vpn access each using its own protocols to encrypt internal data sent over the internet and this prevents unauthorized users from connecting to private networks once connected users have full access or maybe limited access depends like what type of policy we have created so even after successful connection or tunnel negotiation uh, what all applications a user can access what data uh, like maybe uh, resources can access that is again for the control with security rule or security policy so yes we can control like uh, access with the policy just as if they are connected on premises so exactly and even if we want to give unrestricted access full access that is also policy or that is also possible so uh, here like uh, for example local lan is 10.10.11.1 .10 .1 means like this entire network range or subnet range that is 10.10.1 .10 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 .1 so internal network, corporate network, enterprise network, and uh, WAN interface IP, public IP is this. So remote uh, client is like uh, our mobile user connected with internet. And uh, putty client is basically a software, uh, VPN agent software, VPN client software that need to be installed on machine like computer or laptop or desktop, right? In order to have uh, a proper, I mean, like, uh, or like full access if required to corporate network, even though like uh, there can be a clientless remote access VPN also, clientless wherein like client software is not required, we can use a browser to connect with remote access VPN gateway to access resources, but very limited, in fact, uh, access can be provided and just with the help of SSL portal. So it's not very common, in fact, uh, clientless VPN. Clientless VPN is mainly for, let's say you have a FTP server and you have uh, uploaded a folder and you want your partners or maybe consultant to access that uh, FTP server or maybe the folder securely. So for that, yes, like we can use clientless VPN because not permanent employee and uh, maybe occasionally like uh, uh, maybe FTP server or some information put over the SSL portal are required to be accessed. Then yes, we can go with this clientless because in clientless VPN client software or any agent software not required to be installed. So uh, straight away, just like uh, using any standard browser, uh, published resources, like resources published to SSL portal can be accessible. So not very common, but yes, uh, also supported. That means in remote access VPN, there can be a client-based VPN, remote access VPN, and client-less VPN. There are two types, in fact, client-based and client-less. And further in client based, either we can go with IPsec or SSL. And client less is always SSL basically. Right? So in remote access VPN, there can be uh, client based or client less remote access VPN client. Client based means a client software, VPN agent software uh, is required to be installed on a remote uh, client machine. Client less means no VPN client software, no agent software, only browser like Chrome or Firefox or any browser can be used. 
further in client based when we connect to vpn gateway right and when first time we create a profile or you can say like a connection in fact the first time configuration on this laptop or remote client machine then we uh, would have option like whether we want to uh, go with this ipc or ssl right so we can make selection and also ssl for ssl like there is separate configuration on firewall side for ipc remote access vpn a separate configuration like so let us assume FortiGate firewall has been configured for both ipc and ssl then yes a uh, client can connect e either using ipsec or ssl if firewall is configured only for ipsec remote access vpn of course there is no way like to connect using ssl right that means in remote access vpn client based remote access vpn we do have choice between ipsec and ssl right so ipsec negotiation is done very much as uh, no, it is done in side to side vpn ssl is very different ssl uh, key computation and negotiation is very different than this uh, ip second fact right but both are uh, of course like available ip sec and ssl and i'm going to explain ssl also uh, like whether we uh, should go with ssl or ip sec and the uh, and the important uh, point like that uh, need to be properly understood here is a very important concept in remote access vpn that is split tunneling the split tunneling is really uh, one of the important option in remote access vpn but what is uh, split tunneling i'm just going to explain that also so overall, like in this remote access VPN, client-based, client-less. In client-based further, there can be IPsec or SSL, right? SSL or IPsec. How do remote access VPN work? So remote access VPN, VPNs work by encrypting data set between external user and your organization's internal network. Regardless of the user's location, remote access VPNs build private tunnels between a company's network and remote user, correct? Due to their encryption capabilities, remote access VPNs are considered the industry standard for remote security. And nowadays, there is one more uh, product uh, apart from this remote access VPN, and that is Zero Trust Network Access, ZTNA or yeah, ZTNA, right? It's a new product nowadays, Zero Trust Network Access. Very similar to remote access VPN, Hardly there are like some differences between remote access and ZTNA or ZTNA. And with some advanced capabilities are featured in zero trust network access, but very much like is to replace remote access VPN technology. Uh, because in zero trust network access, uh, uh, like there is built in a uh, solution for this posture management. Posture management. Posture management means like uh, if your laptop is infected with virus or maybe there is no antivirus software installed, there is no Windows uh, update, right? Or maybe uh, uh, using pirated Windows. So even after successful tunnel negotiation with GTNA, successful tunnel is negotiated but if your uh, computer or like tab or whatever like device you are using to connect uh, doesn't meet the compliance requirement, doesn't meet the policy or posture 
policy requirement. So access is not granted, right? So access is granted only if like policy or maybe uh, uh, conditions that we have specified are meeting, right? Otherwise, no. First, like uh, in most of the zero trust network solution. Apart from that, also in zero trust network access, easily we can mention the application. For example, if we want that uh, only certain applications should be accessible to remote access VPN clients, so that we can easily do with the zero trust network access. Even in remote access VPN, also like we can customize the policy accordingly, right? Plus, multi-factor authentication again is built in in zero trust network access, and there is another enhancement in split tunneling mechanism. But in order to understand that, first you should understand what is split tunneling. But that's another uh, feature like incorporated in zero trust network access and different than traditional remote access VPN. So zero trust network access solution is very much like modern uh, 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 remote access VPN, basically, with some differences, of course, with some differences. And uh, a lot of companies like uh, are coming up with their solutions product, like uh, one of the important uh, uh, name is like Perimeter 81. Perimeter 81. And I think uh, Fortigate or some other company has just recently purchased uh, this uh, vendor like Perimeter 81. And uh, very popular name is this Zero Trust Network Access Domain. And there are some other companies, even Fortinet also has a zero trust network access solution and other vendors also like coming up with zero trust network access. And another reason why zero trust network access dedicated appliance is getting so popular nowadays because of, uh, you know, like uh, role distribution also means uh, your firewall is already doing plenty of job, in fact, encryption, uh, like uh, SSL decryption, policy, threat prevention, IPS, and other stuff. So another reason why, like, uh, a lot of organizations prefer to have a dedicated zero trust network access to distribute the load, in fact, right? One device dedicated for uh, providing this remote access uh, solution. And uh, mainly after this COVID and all that, like uh, GTNA got so popular, and there is another enhanced version, advanced version of this, uh, that is software defined perimeter, SDP. Like, so there is another solution apart from this. SDP is something like a, a cloud based, in fact, controller based solution for this remote access VPN. Means, like, SDP controller, just like SDVAN solution, right? And that's why it's known as software defined perimeter. So here, like if this is my corporate network or enterprise network, and a user wants to access corporate network resources, like here there is VPN solution, remote access VPN, like zero trust network access or VPN. But a remote access VPN client is not directly going to connect with the VPN or something like first, like we'll hit to this controller. Controller is in the cloud, right? Proper authentication will be done. Everything policy will be checked. What resources this user can access or not, right? What application can access, what application cannot access. It's all done from here. And then like second connection uh, created to this uh, uh, VPN. For example, straight away, if like client is going to access application app one, and user is not authorized to access the application app one. So even at the first place by the controller itself, a uh, request will be denied. And there is no point of like uh, being redirected to the corporate side. Uh, th this type of solution basically. So SDP is like, uh, again, different than the zero trust network access. So these are some advanced technologies, right? Remote access VPN already is like very popular and old solution. We have zero trust network access for remote access. We have software defined perimeter. In uh, like both a remote access VPN, encryption, decryption method or like uh, remains same in fact, right? Negotiation and all that. 
because zero trust network access is also built on top of like the same technology vpn technology so not very much different than the remote access vpn but vendors are selling their products with gtn remote access and uh, they bring out like a lot of uh, comparison with remote access vpn but generally if we are using remote access vpn solution of any good vendor right then hardly you will find uh, two or three differences between uh, these two apart from the uh, load sharing or load distribution means like having a dedicated appliance for remote access vpn in your corporate network other than that uh, i don't see like any major difference i, I mean like because um, in remote access uh, but yes in remote access VPN, like maybe uh, if you want to do like multi-factor authentication or some advanced technology, then some third-party integration are required. Uh, without third-party integration, uh, doing a lot of configuration not possible. Uh, but in zero trust network access and all that, like uh, it's very easily done. In fact, right, we we generally get the option and all the APIs and everything is in, in, in built In fact, so that's another difference or reason you can say. Yeah. So now client base, IP say remote access VPN. Client base means like where client software uh, is in fact uh, used. So for it offers two primary protocols for establishing remote access VPN connection. One protocol of framework is the same like IP say, and another protocol is SSL, secure socket layer. So um, IPsec and SSL, there are two different uh, uh, protocols used in remote access VPN. If uh, you want to configure both IPsec SSL, yes, you can do that. If you want to configure only IPsec, then you can configure only IPsec. If we have option, we can use either both or only one. So in IPsec VPN, uh, we know like IPsec is a suite of protocols or framework used to secure internet communication. With Fortinet IPsec VPN, users need to install a dedicated client software. Like client software isn't basically on their devices, correct? This client creates a secure communication or connection to the Fortinet firewall. Connection can be initiated using pre-shared key. And here again, since it is IPsec VPN, so VPN peers authentication is done. However, exactly here, like there is no, uh, like uh, there are not like two gateways. But authentication is done between remote access VPN client and the VPN gateway. So again, for mutual authentication, either pre-shared key or digital certificate, right? Required here. Most of the time we go with this pre-shared key. Even. Certificate is, however, the best option. So uh, if you can use like digital certificate for authentication, so more secure than pre-shared key, in fact. But we have both the option in IPsec VPN. Client based, uh, sorry, SSL based. So, a standard SSL and TLS encryption. And what is a standard SSL or TLS encryption? So, hang in there. So, I'm going to explain about this encryption method, how it is done. And again, like uh, this remote access VPN client software or agent creates a secure tunnel between the user device and the corporate network, enabling access to internal resources in a secure manner. So whether we are using SSL VPN or IPsec VPN, both provides secure communication, secure tunneling. Security-wise, they both are secure secure tunnel between user's device and the corporate network. So whether we are using SSL VPN, remote access VPN, I mean, 
on IPsec remote access VPN. Both are secure. Security wise, there is no problem. But in SSL, there is no uh, uh, extra protocol or different protocol like other than like HTTPS. It's like the same technology like HTTPS technology, right? Whereas in IPsec VPN, I could want if NAT device is there in front of VPN, then NAT UDP port number 4500, ESP for the number 15. But in SSL, only uh, TCP port 443. No, uh, like other protocol here, SSL. And here comes like another important point in remote access VPN, and that is a split terminal. A very good uh, like uh, concept here, a split terminal. And common term, in fact, right? Whether we are using Cisco remote access VPN, Palo Alto, FortiGate, Checkpoint, everywhere we find this option. A split tunneling option. So what is a split tunneling? A split tunneling is a feature that allows a remote access VPN user to access both the VPN protected network and the public internet simultaneously. In other words, not all traffic is routed through the VPN tunnel, and this can be useful to optimize bandwidth uses and provide access to local resources while still benefiting from the security of the VPN sensitive data. So a split tunneling is something like uh, controlling uh, uh, like all outbound traffic, I mean like with the help of routing, whether all traffic need to be tunneled uh, only a uh, traffic destined for corporate network need to be tunneled. Decided with this split tunneling disable or enable feature or option. Because we have option whether we can enable split tunneling or we can disable split tunneling. Uh, let's see, do I have any other uh, file here? Just uh, let, let me just finish this and then I'll be back to this split tunneling. Because understanding split tunneling is really very, very important in uh, like remote access VPN. So I'll be back to this split tunneling, but let's let's finish this first. So and how do we configure in 40 gate firewall? So uh, 40 client software, yes, is like required to be downloaded and installed on the client machine. Launch the 40 client software. This client side configuration, and uh, when we open 40 client software, then it generally asks to create a new VPN connection. There we select IPsec or SSL. Fill in connection details like. Or uh, your VPN gateway IP address, IC phase one, phase two parameters can also be uh, like changed. In fact, authentication method, and then just click to connect. Kind of dial-up VPN basically, a kind of dial-up VPN. So it's not very complex configuration-wise, not very complex. But let's understand like this split tunneling first, and then I'll be back to SSS protocol. So let me explain this split tunneling. What is a split tunneling in any remote access VPN, not only in 40 gate, in any remote access VPN. So this is my VPN gateway and network, corporate network. 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Internet and remote client. remote client, internet, right? So this is internet link. And after this uh, negotiation, basically a tunnel is created like this, either IPsec or SSL tunnel, depend like whether IPsec protocol or SSL protocol is selected. So it's a secure tunnel, right? IPsec or SSL tunnel between both. And this one is like the physical, your internet link. Now, once internet, uh, like a VPN tunnel is created, negotiated, right? So let us assume a split tunneling option 
is disabled. First, let's understand what happens if it is disabled. No split tunneling. No split tunneling. Tunnel is not splitted. So what happens? After connecting with this VPN gateway, right? Uh, basically, remote client machine, uh, like, definitely would have like a, a VPN adapter or like, and also, uh, let's say, connecting with a Wi-Fi adapter. So Wi-Fi LAN card, I mean, or maybe Ethernet LAN card, right? And another adapter here will be VPN adapter, virtual adapter, virtual LAN card, right? From where it comes after installing software. Once we install software, remote access VPN client software, 40 client software. So automatically you will find another virtual adapter LAN card on your laptop. That is VPN adapter. And already your laptop or desktop has Wi-Fi or Ethernet adapter LAN card for internet connectivity. So this card is for internet connectivity, right? And VPN adapter is virtual adapter, virtual LAN card, virtual LAN card. Or, next, or virtual adapter, or rather, I would say like adapter, virtual adapter, right? Okay, so there are two adapters on your laptop. Wi Fi adapter configuration, like IP address and all that, provided by your internet service provider, or maybe your home router, broadband router, or something, right? IP address and all that. What about this VPN adapter? Configuration of VPN adapter means IP address, gateway, and all that provided by VPN gateway, right? G VPN gateway, your remote access VPN gateway provides IP configuration for VPN adapter, right? So generally what we do here, like either we configure DSCP or just simply we put a range here, IP range, right ip range for example let us assume ip range is 172.16.1.1 to 172.16.1.50 range of 5 uh, 50 ips or 51 ips so when remote access vpn client successfully negotiate a tunnel either ssl or ipsec tunnel right so what happens ip address from this range is automatically provided to vpn adapter so vpn adapter obtains ip configuration from vpn gateway means ip address from this range let us assume vpn adapter ip adapter ip is 172.16.1.2 right so whenever remote access client communicates with corporate network or vpn gateway this one right so vpn adapter is used sending packet inside this tunnel means source ip will be 172.16.1.2 ip right this and destination, whatever destination you want to access. Means any traffic being routed inside the tunnel means source IP would be VPN adapter IP, virtual IP provided from this range. So what happens now? If like remote VPN client wants to access a server in this corporate network, here there is a server right so it's, it's something like you you can imagine if like remote access vpn client is like connected with a, a different segment here right a complete network of this range a virtual adapter here that that means routing like this right two different network segments private virtual or private network segments exactly there is no like uh, interface physical interface here right there is no physical interface 
but you can assume as if remote access VPN client is sitting where? Sitting here, right? Another network segment. Another network segment and IP range is 172 range, right? Someone else. And do we have to configure any routing or so? No, we don't have to. This route is basically automatically added to this VPN gateway routing table and VPN gateway as zoom as if there is another network segment, uh, 172.16, one dot something. So routing wise, no, we don't have to do anything. It's all virtual IP range, but definitely uh, IP address that you so they specify here uh, should not be used anywhere and private IPs, of course. So after tunnel negotiation, Whenever remote access VPN client communicates with corporate network, then VPN adapter is used. IP address assigned to VPN adapter is used, of course, this one IP. And very easily like communication happens here. That's what like, uh, uh, like all about your VPN adapter or virtual adapter, LAN card or virtual adapter in fact. So what, what is now like then split turning in fact, right? Let's get to the main point. Let's understand a split tunneling now. What is split tunneling? So let us assume a split tunneling is not enabled. A split tunneling is not enabled, is disabled. That means tunnel is not a split. So what happens now? After tunnel negotiation, after tunnel negotiation, all packets are tunneled. That means remote access VPN client, even if it, it it tries to access 888, remote access VPN client is trying to access google.com or even corporate network, maybe 10.1.1.5, no matter what the destination is, right? Either internet bound traffic or corporate network bound traffic, both are tunneled, both traffic are put inside this tunnel, right? So even internet bound traffic is being put inside tunnel. So Google traffic, 888, tra 888 traffic even will hit the corporate VPN gateway, right? But destination is what? Google.com. And uh, so what happens now? Now, if 40 gate firewall doesn't have route to the internet for this IP network range, this IP network range. If there is no like uh, policy, there is no routing, there is nothing configured here, then what will happen? Google traffic or internet bound traffic not successfully routed. As a result, remote access VPN client would not have internet access at all. Once VPN is connected, so what you will see, our remote access VPN client will see no internet connection. Whenever VPN is terminated, VPN is disconnected, then internet is running properly, right? This may happen. This may happen. Like whenever you are working from home and connected to a corporate network, you cannot, at the same time, you cannot open Facebook or Google on your laptop. Once you got disconnected from VPN, then yes, you will have internet access. First use case. And when this would happen, when a split tunneling is disabled. So when a split tunneling is disabled, that means all traffic, be that internet bound traffic or corporate network bound traffic will be put inside tunnel. All traffic tunneled and will hit your corporate VPN gateway. Now what happened after that, uh, that depends on your 40 gate firewall configuration, what configuration you have. One option, option number one, no internet access and option number two option number two is even if internet bound traffic reaches corporate vpn gateway so we can configure 40 gate firewall to take a u-turn from here like going this way right password yes that means even internet bound traffic will first hit to hit like corporate vpn gateway and then taking a u-turn from there right so what configuration we would have to do for that? First, creating a security policy. 
first consideration is creating a security policy and VPN gateway. Policy, security policy, right? That if traffic is coming, the source IP 172.16, destination is internet, let this be routed. Second, source NAT. Why source NAT? Because still this IP, VPN adapter IP is private IP. So if we have created security policy, source NAT is enabled. So even if split tunneling is disabled, all internet bound traffic is also uh, being tunneled, right? Reaches VPN gateway, but there would be internet access, but slow internet access, right? So what remote access user or VPN user would feel then? That once like I connect to VPN, then my internet becomes slow, right? And why slow? Because first like internet bound traffic is being encrypted, routed to the corporate VPN gateway from there again decrypted and then taking a U-turn and then routed to the internet. So first like uh, because of routing, because of encryption, yes, remote access VPN user would like realize slow internet connection after VPN connectivity. No VPN connectivity, fast internet connection. Or even remote access VPN user would have like no internet at all once like connected to VPN gateway. Depends like wow, how, what type of configuration we have on our firewall. Now point number two here. Why we would do so like, I mean like, uh, why like doing this type of configuration and you, you, you will find like this type of configuration in many organizations, right? That means this split tunneling is disabled. That means all traffic is first sent to the corporate VPN gateway. And if internet bound traffic, then taking U-turn from there, right? And not internet bound traffic, then directly uh, routed to the corporate network. That means VPN gateway is taking decision now, right? Internet bound traffic, then taking U-turn from here, not internet bound traffic, then corporate network traffic, then sent to the corporate network. But for remote access VPN client, all traffic, inside this tunnel, routed inside this tunnel. So one of the huge case uh, is here that let us, let's take one scenario that um, you are using open internet access and maybe you are like, uh, uh, like at airport or maybe at any public place, coffee shop or anywhere. And your objective is just to have secure internet access only, right? Really, you are not interested uh, to access corporate network resources, right? You, your objective is just to have secure internet access. But since you are not in corporate network, you are at uh, uh, airport or hotel or somewhere else, and your laptop doesn't have firewall, right? Firewall means like next generation firewall, hardly antivirus. So, uh, you cannot take risk like if there is open internet or free internet. So definitely you'd be interested in like uh, doing some secure access. So this type of scenario even will help you out, right? I have just powered on my laptop, first connected to VPN, corporate VPN, my office VPN gateway, and then doing like browsing and all that stuff, right? So like, Objective is to have secure internet access. And for that purpose, for that reason, if I'm first connected to my office VPN gateway and then internet access. So office VPN gateway means like complete threat prevention, right? Antivirus profile, URL profile, other profiles, IPS all activated here. So since communication is happening like through or via this VPN gateway, that means communication is very, very secure. This can be one of the huge case, right? Wherein a split tunneling is disabled, but VPN gateway is configured to uh, take a U-turn for internet bound traffic. Otherwise, I don't see like any other huge case. Why do we like uh, uh, not do like a split tunneling? So this can be one of the reason, right? that uh, you don't want to split the tunnel. You want to put all traffic inside this secure tunnel 
internet bound traffic that decision would be taken by putting it vpn gateway uh, but nowadays um, uh, like even if are like there are some cloud based security solutions because now most of the organizations they prefer to have uh, some you know like uh, cloud based solution or sasi like uh, secure edge secure access solution like g scaler cisco umbrella there are some other solutions so uh, like for security purpose even not required every time to be connected with corporate vpn gateway and accessing uh, through that even like we can uh, use some cloud based security solution so we do have like some cloud based security solution so maybe then uh, this feature uh, might not required but that's what split tunneling is right if split tunneling is disabled i mean but what if split tunneling is enabled let's take another scenario a split tunneling is enabled now so what happens a split tunneling is now enabled scenario number 2 so disabled you understand tunnel is not a split right all traffic put inside this tunnel even internet bound traffic also but if a split tunneling is a split tunneling is in enabled then what happens now enabled split tunneling is enabled and we have also specified that any traffic destined for 10 network should be put inside ssl or ip safe tunnel now remote access vpn clients wants to access 10 network any ip from 10 network and sourcing with vpn adapter ip virtual ip right of course then this traffic since destination is what 888 so traffic will be put inside this tunnel why because destination is 10 network and 10 network is what my corporate network right but at the same time if destination is other than 10 network destination is other than 10 network let's say destination is 888 so what happens source ip is like your wifi adapter ip address now this time not virtual and traffic is routed via this lan card or wifi adapter like why are via your isp or broadband or home router so basically there are two routes here there are two path right it's like a destination based routing for 10 network tunnel is like is used any other destination other than corporate network right so it's steering of flag traffic traffic has been like you know like uh, uh, completely uh, bifurcated there are two path in fact so if split tunneling is enabled and we have specified that only 10 network traffic should be put inside ipsec or ssl tunnel and traffic for any other destination directly to the internet right so that's what a split tunneling is exactly and how is all achieved in fact right because uh, you know like uh, uh, what data or what traffic should be put inside tunnel what traffic should be sent natively like without encryption decision is taken by the remote access vpn client machine right this one because uh, routing uh, like which path had to be taken decided by uh, this device in fact uh, let me client machine right from here itself like routing via this or this so how it is done with routing routing of what would you get firewall no routing of your windows computer mac computer linux machine whatever like a device you are using here routing table of this that means this computer route table should have route that in order to send packet to this use this interface link ip or whatever like 172 ip i mean like this range ip for any other destination 1000 use isp network 
our home router broadband router so do we have to do routing on like vpn client machine do we have to put route because in, in windows also we can do routing like with the command route add and we can see routing table with route print i will show you in the lab right no we don't have to do any routing on vpn client machine then how it is done it is done by this vpn gateway so when we enable split tunneling right we we uh, specify that uh, uh, network address our uh, corporate network is 10000 like this route is inserted by this vpn gateway so whenever remote access vpn client successfully connected with the vpn gateway so route is pushed by vpn gateway and is installed on this look uh, vpn client machine and we can verify the same from cli with the command uh, on windows machine we can run the command route print round pre route print output will show route in the routing table and whatever route is advertised or sent or installed or injected by vpn gateway would have higher metric best metric in fact so even if you have done routing locally on that so uh, this route will as always be preferred route pushed by this vpn gateway device so it's basically a split tunneling is routing feature routing mechanism but is done in very automated fashion we don't have to uh, put any route in the routing table we just configure our vpn gateway and then uh, accordingly route is installed on remote access vpn client machine in fact so really this split tunneling is a very very important configuration that we do when we configure remote access vpn whether it's poti gate or any other vendor remote access vpn uh, in checkpoint like uh, it's not clearly mentioned like a split tunneling and there we find option uh, route all traffic through the gateway or not like this type of option we find there but in uh, other vendors like uh, maybe palo alto or cisco even poti net clearly we see option split tunneling and either we enable or just we disable that option but uh, uh, split tunneling is very very important configuration in any remote access vpn because it's split tunneling decides how routing would be done right after tunnel negotiation i hope this point is clear to all of you if any doubt any question Uh, about a split tunneling so yes you can ask you question here if you have any concern with this split tunneling option so <clears throat> question here yes derek um when 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 the source mm -hmm. with the with the split tunnel running disable disable okay um, mm -hmm. right so when i'm doing the internet browsing all my traffic are hitting the corporate let's say Correct. i'm hitting the world all, all the traffic are hitting the company corporate yeah, well. and they're using the internet of a corporate mm. internet to go out correct correct right so in on the google that if i type who what is my ip so what he sees is the corporate ip address correct vpn gateway okay. ip address yes because okay. because Good. source ip is matched with that ip correct okay so now when i now with the uh, split tunnel enable the feature enable mm -hmm. uh, the same thing if i type what is my ip that should be my home isp okay. internet ip okay Very i got true. it okay all right got it thank you okay yes so as uh, direct like mention like uh, if a split tunneling is enabled then since uh, uh, all traffic is not like uh, routed to the corporate vpn gateway so definitely we are using our home internet connection so if we type what is my ip then of course like the same ip and uh, why like uh, if, if it is split tunneling is uh, disabled so why we would see like uh, vpn gateway ip as my own ip because netting is done by the vpn gateway so uh, here like we configure source net so when traffic takes a u turn like for internet then source ip is netted with corporate vpn gateway Uh, external interface ip public ip address that is why so uh, i mean like uh, uh, we would feel like as if we are sitting in the corporate network right is split tunneling is uh, a disable and 
if split tunneling is disabled means there is no split tunneling and corporate vpn gateway is not configured with mat not configured with policy so even there will not not be any internet at all in fact right once we connect to vpn no internet so even like if a company wants a very you know like uh, a company want like to restrict their users not to have access at the uh, internet access at the same time connect with corporate network for 8 hours and do only uh, office related work no internet at all all right so uh, this is also possible with this uh, split tunneling first like uh, uh, disabled and uh, no like source net or uh, any other policy created on the vpn gateway because you must have like uh, come across like uh, during this covid and after covid Uh, a lot of engineers were like doing multiple jobs in fact like simultaneously like uh, taken up they have taken up assignment from different companies and uh, doing like uh, two jobs together by setting are working from, like remotely or work from home and uh, uh, with two laptops maybe <laughs> however like they were using like two different laptops and uh, doing like multiple jobs and taking salary from two different companies and even uh, uh, big companies like even infosys and other companies they like fired a lot of engineers when like they came to know like this moon lighting so wipro also did exactly the same so during this covid uh, a lot happened in fact so moon lighting and all that stuff anyway so split tunneling is about like uh, and if we see like then it's all about routing right direct split tunneling is about routing how yes. to route the traffic you know yeah. how to route that's the what i want to know yeah that's why i want to know what is the ip on the internet you know i'm trying to figure mm-hmm. that out exactly so it's all about routing basically and it's done like uh, by this vpn big gateway so vpn gateway controls the routing of vpn client machine basically that controls because what route will be installed what route not will be start done by that and another important discussion we are going to have here now uh, in remote access vpn and then we'll end up today session is like ipsec vpn we understood like uh, there are two tunnels phase 1 phase 2 phase 1 is for management and all that operation that means phase 1 tunnel is used to ex- securely exchange information uh, of like uh, vpn gateways only so when vpn gateways exchange information then phase 1 tunnel is used uh, for data plane traffic user traffic a uh, phase 2 tunnel is uh, used in fact uh, phase 1 is uh by directional phase 2 is unidirectional and all all that stuff like route based policy based and all that but what about ipsec vpn so if you oh, sorry ssl vpn so because in remote access vpn we have choice like we have choice either we can use ipsec or ssl so what if ssl is being used uh internal not ipsec so what happens how encryption is done so let's understand this ssl negotiation uh the concept behind this ssl handshake or ssl negotiation literally ssl is very different than your ipsec in fact right there is no comparison between ssl because ssl handshake means like uh, same exactly uh, when we open any site with https when we open any site with https so exactly the same happens in fact ssl handshake is done and so what happens like when we open any secure site like paypal or facebook or any website with https so what happens there how data is encrypted let's understand that because exactly the same technology the same uh, negotiation is done in ssl vpn because https is also very much like ssl vpn and uh, uh, sometimes like even we see ssl slash tls mentioned in most of the documents right so basically ssl and tls they both are almost same secure socket layer transport layer security transport layer security and secure socket layer they both are uh, same basically and uh, however uh, nowadays we are using tls right a uh, standardized uh, 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 like suite for encryption decryption and all that ssl 
is not a standardized version ssl basically like a concept was given by a vendor netscape netscape uh, was also very much in browsing also netscape navigator very similar to chrome firefox so 15 20 years back uh, there was very popular browser netscape navigator apart from internet explorer there were no other browsers at that time no like firefox mozilla and all that safari yes netscape navigator safari internet explorer these these were like some browsers so the same company uh, like um, given the concept of this ssl or ssl proto was secure socket layer and they came with different version of ssl like ssl version 1.0 then ssl version 2.0 3.0 and different versions means like different uh, cipher suites different encryption technologies or hashing technologies and all that so when like the next version was to be released ssl version 4 then internet communities decided to came with uh, uh, like you know some standardized uh, like protocol or some standardized encryption and decryption method so they name it uh, like tls so tls is not uh, like vendor specific is a standard standard or standardized and uh, and then nomenclature even is different in tls so instead of ssl version 4 like there is tls 1.0 so basically tls 1.0 is equivalent to ssl version 4 because only in ssl there are three versions version 1 2 3 no ssl version 4 and then a new series came in tls 1.0 tls 1.1 and now like is is going this way 1.2 1.3 and i think 1.4 is also in the pipeline and maybe must have been released now but otherwise latest is tls 1.3 so basically tls is the standardized version of ssl right uh, but since ssl is so popular known to everyone ki still we use the term ssl handshake ssl certificate right very rare we use the term tls handshake tls certificate no because ssl is really is still very very popular so sometime we use ssl sometime we use term tls they both are interchanged right but one of the same thing so ssl and tls they both are same tls however is the advanced version of ssl nothing different so because this creates confusion sometime uh, what is tls what is ssl so they both are same just reason is like uh, very straight forward that ssl very popular and uh, so it is still like people call it ssl ssl certificate ssl handshake even though even though we are using tls 1.2 or tls 1.3 proto was sweet no more like ssl but still we use ssl handshake or ssl certificate but the point here how like encryption is done in ssl if it is not ipsec there is no phase 1 phase 2 so how like communication is secure so in order to understand that Let's take one example and let's understand what happens when we open any website with HTTPS, because exactly the same negotiation, the same uh, uh, like uh, uh, messages are exchanged during SSL handshake also, apart from IP assignment and all that. So when we open any website with HTTPS, let's say you type HTTPS colon any website, let's say PayPal dot com. Right. and internet here and is a paypal server and client so what we understand that when we use https then a secure tunnel is created between client and the web server and that's true ssl tunnel is created is ssl tunnel a tunnel is created and data uh, like exchange between client and secure uh, and server is very much secure 
encryption and authentication, everything is done, right? If we are using HTTPS secure site, but an encryption that is always like uh, in bulk data transfer, bulk data transfer, always symmetric encryption is done. Symmetric encryption is done, right? And what is symmetric encryption? Same key is used by both parties. For example, if client and server, they both have agreed upon that A will be encrypted as zero, B means one, C means two, D means three, E means four, and F means five. And here also A zero, B zero, sorry, one, C three, E four, and F means five, right? So now what happens now? Zero, one, two, oops, I did something. Zero, one, two, three, A, B, C, D is missing. And that's why like, there is not symmetry. E and F, right? So if let us assume is symmetric encryption that both parties, both parties means client and server agreed upon or they both have same key and that's what symmetric encryption is. So what happens now this, if this client has to send let's say or data to the server and data is feed, let us assume data is F double E D. So what happens, encryption means now encrypted with the key and what key, and I'm not going to discuss about different headers. We understand like uh, all the outermost headers like IP, TCP and all that. In case of SSL, ISP, uh, IP sake, you understand like already we have discussed inside to side VPN, ESP header and what would be inside ESP header. Okay, so encryption key is F means five, E means four, three. So encrypted as feed means like now five, four, four, three, right? So this is encrypted now. When it reaches to the server, so server has same key. So now this portion will be decrypted, decrypted by server and decrypted as five means F, Double E D, right? That means during transport, data like encrypted, feed sent as 5443, and further like on destination, 443 is converted back to actual data that is feed. But this would happen only if both client and server, they both have same keys. And that's what symmetric encryption is. And whenever there is a bulk data transfer, always symmetric encryption is done, right? Because asymmetry means using different keys for encryption and decryption. Maybe public key for encryption and private key for decryption, or maybe vice versa. So if different keys are used for encryption and decryption, that is asymmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption. Same keys are used, that is symmetric encryption. So in bulk data transfer, always symmetric encryption is done because symmetric encryption is faster than asymmetric. Asymmetric is very, very slow, very, very slow, right? Bulk data transfer, symmetric is always done. Now, the big challenge here is how do both have same key? that A will be written as zero, B written as one, C written as two, D three, and so on. So that's uh, really a big challenge because the information cannot be sent over the internet because if let's say a client decided to do encryption this way and this information is sent across over internet, so it's not a secure way. Anybody would get this like information, 
like would be knowing like how to do the perform the decryption. So of course, both client and servers are not going to exchange information using insecure transport like internet. And if that is not done, then how will that be possible? I mean, like both client and server using same key. So let's understand that, right? How keys are computed in HTTPS or SSL, right? Because kernel is only about uh, encryption, encapsulation. So what happens when we type HTTPS colon double slash and any name? So first like domain name is resolved, of course. So we don't want to get into a uh, DNS part of it, like how uh, resolution is done, how domain name is resolved to IP address. So let's understand paypal.com is successfully resolved or translated to IP address either by local DNS or any other DNS server. So what happens next now? So client then immediately send the packet to the uh, server from client to the server and known as client SSL packet, hello packet. In this packet, client sends like what TLS or SSL version supported by the browser, Chrome browser, and whole bunch of supported cipher suites, means encryption method, Diffie Hellman and all that, right? In the first packet itself, also like some session ID, session specific data, and this common name or domain name, like there is another important field, SNI, wherein like this domain name will be mentioned, paypal.com. So complete information is sent in packet number one, that is client SSL hello packet, client to server. What PayPal server or web server does now? First, like checks whether server also supports same cipher suite, means encryption, hashing, and other methods, SSL or TLS version, right? If all same, server also support like same encryption, hashing, SSL, and TLS version, then immediately server send another packet. And this time from server to client is part of SSL handshake, so packet number two. So packet number two is from server to client and known as server hello packet. It's just the acceptance that yes, I agree to the same oh, encryption, hashing and other meter. What next now? Now paper server sends Again, from server to client, certificate, SSL certificate, plus public key. And then the fourth packet, three packets, all like back to back. The fourth packet is, yes, my hello negotiation is done now, for now. So three messages, three packets are sent by server to the client. So server packet number two is all about like uh, uh, agreement or acceptance of uh, parameters or attributes. But what about packet number three, server certificate, right? This one. So certificate and then of course it is done. So three packets are sent, right? So certificate is, now PayPal server is showing a distress certificate, sending a certificate to the client that see, I have a digital certificate, I have a digital document, and you can find my name on the certificate, that my name is paypal.com. Certificate is also is still valid, and issuing authority is maybe DigiCert or any other authority. So what's the purpose of this SSL certificate? First, to establish identity, identity of the server that if I am trying to access paypal.com, so really I have been connected with paypal.com. How it is established with certificate. So whenever PayPal server like sends certificate, so client immediately checks the information on the certificate, what is name, uh, issuing authority, 
validity everything checked on the certificate and client also ensured that signing authority issuing authority is trusted by the browser browser knows like who have signed the certificate right if it is known ca known signing authority and certificate is valid not expired common name is also matching with the name typed in the browser that's also very important right if it's all matching then only browser will just proceed to the next step otherwise you will immediately see warning message error message in your browser they're sorry certificate cannot be trusted maybe because unknown issuer or issuing authority i do not know who have signed who has signed the certificate or maybe certificate is valid right something so let, let's understand then here like uh, on the server side pepa server must have obtained this certificate from internet based ca authority right pepa server must have approached public ca certificate signing authority for example dg cert dg cert right so paypal authorities management must have approach public ca like dg cert that i need a uh, ssl certificate ready to pay certificate authority server like dg cert definitely will ask like uh, organization to prove identity that yes like ownership of the domain is with the company right if all good then ca server like the dg cert creates a digital document and send via like email attachment to the server then certificate is installed on the server so whenever anyone like tries to open the website same certificate is given so certificate obtained by public ca and that's why trusted client's browser like will not show any error or warning message there so that's the whole purpose of server certificate but what about the public key there right what is that public key because we have understood certificate is to establish identity that there is no spoofing there is no man in middle if we have app type paypal.com in my browser then really i have been connected with paypal.com server there is no like man in middle that's the whole purpose right so let me make a space here so now so far like we have understood like these three messages so let me okay so from where paypal.com server has got the certificate public ca certificate authority server and of course it's not a free service so certificate authorities like dg cert commando very sign they take money right they ask for the money of course so so far we have understood that post packet client to server so client ssl hello right then second third and then hello message then so second third second is server so right okay. and this one is certificate plus public key and then it is server hello then so what is now public key here what is the role of this public key because certificate we we have understood to establish identity now public key here is uh, whenever uh, like certificate is uh, like uh, paypal server like ask for like any certificate with any cs server certificate authority server so basically uh, a csr file is generated from the server certificate signing request and when csr is generated then two half of a key also generated one is known as public key another one is private key so basically this csr file is shared with the certificate authorities 
but only this portion public key so public key is generally uh, uh, like very much part of your certificate right but not the private key private key is held by the server by uh, any device and csr is like uh, is certificate signing request is encrypted text data right created or generated on the device where we install certificate let's say you want a certificate for your riverbed when optimization so you will have to generate csr on your riverbed you want certificate to be installed on your f5 device f5 big ip so you will have to generate csr on f5 big ip device you want to install certificate on windows web server iis server so generate csr from iis that means csr is like something uh, uh, like uh, encrypted text wherein like uh, all the informations like your uh, website name company name organization name plus public key as all like uh, is will be in csr file encrypted file shared with cs server cs server uses like those information uh, in generating certificate but public key is never shared with anyone right uh, sorry private key is never shared with anyone private key means like very much private public key is yes shared public key is shared here again but what's the purpose of public key so let's understand now what happens next once identity has has been established certificate is valid everything is up to the mark so what client does now client performs some computation mathematical computation and computes pre master secret key pre master secret key is generated by client machine browser pre master secret key a key here right and now this key need to be shared with server this key need to be sent right key need to be sent even though it's not the final encryption key is a pre master key pre master key pre master key is used to compute encryption key main key final key right so from pre master key actual encryption key is computed but this pre master key need to be shared with the server because they both should have same pre master key but again the big challenge if the pre master key is shared without encryption right then a security risk so what happens here in packet number 5 pre master key is sent of course but encrypted not in plain text encrypted encrypted right is a key exchange so client send pre master key but encrypted key how that encryption is done so in order to do that encryption this public key is used public key initially shared by server so this public key is used to encrypt pre master key secret key so what happens now if someone hacks like or like uh, or somehow manages to capture key pre master key so since pre master key is encrypted and there is no way to decrypt that because for decryption other half of the key required other half means this portion and where is private key with the server only so even if someone like gets that pre master key this one so there is no way to uh, do the decryption because in order to decrypt that other half of the public key that means private key required here so this was securely uh, encrypted pre master key like sent to the server server has other half private key decrypted and now they both client and server had same pre master key later on they both would use same encryption or mathematical computation same mathematical computation to compute final key right and they both would end up in same key why because if pre master keys or pre master key rather is same and they both are doing the same mathematical computation so definitely outcome 
the end result will be same. They both will have same key. Right. And that's the whole purpose. Like why public key is also sent and what the use case of that public key. And this type of encryption and decryption is basically asymmetric encryption. Asymmetric, wherein private and public key combination is used. Right. But it is very, very slow. That means in VPN, first asymmetric encryption is used to compute symmetric key. And once symmetric key is computed, generated, then for bulk data transfer, symmetric key is used. So very much VPN technology means hybrid key. Why hybrid key? Because first, initially, a symmetric method is used, private and public key combination is used, and after that, symmetric, same key. So in packet number five, basically, client sends encrypted message, means, like a key exchange is done, but it's not in plain text, encrypted, encrypted by, uh, with the public key initially shared by server. And other half of that key, private key, will be with the server only. So this way, client is successful in sharing pre-master key. And then final computation will be done, and then client will send another packet, packet number six, that now onwards, I'm going to change my cipher specification. I'll be using like encryption, hashing, and all like methods as we have initially like uh, agreed upon. And then like client uh, send another packet, seven packet that I'm done. I'm finished. My my side negotiation and packet exchange is done. Finished. Then packet number eight, like server is sending the same. Like now onwards, like like encryption and everything like will be encrypted. That means changing cipher specification. And then ninth message is like, I'm also done with means finished. So this way total nine messages are exchanged between client and server. And uh, like in case of any website, whenever we access website with HTTPS, Identity is also established. Identity is also proved with the certificate. Public key is used in uh, in secure exchange of pre-master key. Pre-master key. I'm using the term pre-master key because that is not actual key. That is not used for data encryption decryption. But yes, pre-master key is used in computing uh, master key, right? So. Uh, and that's the reason like, why pre-master key is also not shared in plain text. Because if pre-master key is compromised, that means anybody can compute uh, like uh, by using some, you know, like permutation combination can compute the same key. So yes, pre-master secret key should also be exchanged in very secure manner. And that is done in SSL. So very similar steps are performed when we use SSL VPN remote access SSL VPN, right? From where certificate comes there, we can use self-signed certificate, certificate uh, generated by FortiGate firewall itself, or maybe we can use a certificate issued by any public CS certificate. But yes, in SSL VPN, certificate is used. Without certificate, not possible. And exactly the same methods, like negotiation method is done. And that's the reason. Uh, that SSL VPN is also secured because uh, client and server now both have uh, uh, successfully computed keys, right? And uh, communication is very, very secure. So whether we are using IPsec VPN or SSL VPN, in terms of security, both are secure. But SSL, as we understand, is like uh, uh, very much like related with uh, presentation and application layer of your OSI model because presentation is like how data is presented. But uh, SSL uses TCP port 443, means like your application layer, TCP port 443. Whereas IPsec, IPsec is a complete framework, right? Here like we use IIC protocol. So IIC is something like uh, UDP base, UDP base like very much like application protocol. Any protocol that uses TCP or UDP port means like your application 
but esp is not application layer protocol esp is very much like your uh, network protocol like eigrp ospf ike is like your bgp protocol border gateway protocol uses tcp 179 port means application layer whereas eigrp ospf no application right uh, like just they use protocol numbers for identification purpose same here esp is like protocol number 50 not port number it's just protocol number 50 esp so esp is very much like above network layer i is like your uh, up to layer 7 and ipsec itself is a framework whereas ssl is not any framework it's just a protocol secure socket layer is, is something like uh, about the presentation and application layer but security wise they both are uh, almost doing the same job they both are providing uh, like secure communication so in FortiGate, like we uh, can use like both and whenever we'll do like lab of this FortiGate firewall so we'll see like input uh, of course today i'm not going to uh, start with the lab because already uh, it's like uh, we are about to finish today's session but whenever we do configuration i i mean like we open this uh, let me quickly just show you like from where do we get the option so whenever we create um, any connection here so you can see here like ssl vpn or ipsec vpn right provided uh, your firewall should also uh, be configured because if even if i select ssl vpn and i do like everything here on client machine but for get firewall has been not configured with ssl parameters so yes like connection will not be successful same with ipsec vpn and in ipsec vpn also you can see like connection name remote gateway ip and even if i click here advanced settings so here like we see like phase one and phase two parameters right very much like side to side vpn because a lot of people a lot of engineers think that uh, remote access vpn is always ssl vpn no that's not true remote access vpn can also be ipsec and can also be ssl so we cannot say like remote access is uh, ssl and side to side is ipsec no because you can see here uh, we, we do have option to uh, go with this ipsec vpn uh, like if required and in case if you want to go with ssl vpn then you can use ssl but in ssl vpn you don't see like uh, like option here to configure phase one phase two and all that because there is no as such phase one phase two only uh, your uh, standard uh, HTTPS style handshake client certificate option is there so if uh, you want to use your certificate you have any certificate so you can use this otherwise like certificate is pushed by the firewall in fact sent by the firewall uh, because for the, uh, this uh, is not mandatory configuration but we do have and in ipsec also uh, if required then you can customize your phase one phase two but again uh, if you have selected here phase one or phase two aes 128 and 40 gate firewall is configured for des then yes like connection will never be successful and remember whenever you are doing lab uh, of uh, like you and you are using trial version of 40 gate firewall so as we discuss in ipsec uh, uh, side to side vpn session and we have also uh, seen that like in lab that uh, i phase one and phase two means like only des is supported des very weak encryption method and for authentication only sha1 and md5 right with evaluation version license that means whenever we do uh, like lab a 40 gate remote access vpn so make sure that you change phase one and phase two parameter to ds here right otherwise no way like your ip sake or remote access vpn connection will never be uh, successful right so uh, in order to do like uh, uh, lab implementation make sure that you go to this uh, vpn setting and uh, very much like you have changed like encryption and authentication method for both phase one and phase two but only in the lab environment only with the trial version license in production network no like even ds or triple ds no you should never use that very weak encryption method so that's all about like remote access VPN theory session. So next class, in next class, we'll see like how we can configure remote access VPN. So we will jump to the uh, lab implementation. And then after next topic will be your high availability mode, HA mode.
after like uh, remote access VPN lab. So next class first, like we'll start with this remote access VPN lab and then HMO. So any questions so far? Because I'm going to stop recording and uh, we'll wrap up today's session here. Uh, no, sir. All good. Okay. So that's